Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Michigan here with a very special replay. This replay is going to feature everything from sportsmanship to generosity to teamwork and a whole lot of skill. So you're definitely going to want to stay for the entire portion of this replay. Now we have Killer Beast here in his VZ75 and he is top tier fighting against tier 8 on Siegfried line. Now the BZ75 is the newest tier 10 edition of the game if you're watching this as soon as it's released and it is a tier 10 Chinese heavy tank with rocket boosters. It gets six of them and Killer Beast has just used two to start this game to get into an early position here in the city. Now the BZ75 has quite a interesting gun. It has three choices of ammunition, AP, we have heat, and we have high explosive rounds. Now, Killer Beast is going to start off with the heat that have a nice 650 damage comparable to the version 4 and a very average 258 pen, which is on par with pretty much the vast majority of tier 10s. If that won't do the trick, you have some 152 millimeter heat with 319 pen and the same 650 alpha. Now, 319 heat is a little lackluster at tier 10 as many even medium tanks are sporting 330 millimeter heat. And as always, he's brought a little bit of high explosive. If you run into that lightly armored vehicle or that low health tank, 90 millimeters of pen. So it is a full blooded HE round and 840 alpha. Now, Killer hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities to shoot anything yet. He's in the middle of the city, playing behind this very nice building, and this is where he's going to spend a good portion of his game. And while Killer takes his first chunk of damage, he is not going to dish anything out, and you just missed it. The shell went right over the leopard's head. Now, there's a lot of benefits to this position as we move out. You can get some shots across and through this gap. However, the enemies can also shoot through those gaps. So you have to be very, very careful about backing up, especially when you're engaging enemies that are coming through the main entrance. And Killer is going to show us that he knows exactly how to play this position as he puts a first hit for 702 damage into the drive wheel of that Badger using this nice handy little ramp here. Now this ramp allows the BZ-75 to go very hold down which is fantastic at engaging enemies on that corner, especially a non turreted TD such as that Badger. Now he's looking around, expecting that E100 of CS to possibly come up the ramp, but it doesn't look like they're going to do it for now. But here comes the E100. Will he cross? There we go. 594, a little bit of a low roll there. Lower, rolling for uh, 56 below. However, he did roll actually 50 52 above so that's okay and a nice roll there for 720 taking a huge chunk out of that t57 heavy now my opinions on this tank when it came out weren't so great over killer beast so far this video has been changing my opinion the reload on this vehicle is really nice though the accuracy is sometimes it's decent however it is a large caliber gun as he misses the back of the turret of the amx 5120 now his team isn't in the greatest position. They're down a thousand hit points and two vehicles. The enemy team have completely taken the field. And most of the time on this map, that means certain death for your team. However, Killer is going to have something to say about that later on. Looking the 5120, he just had a sixth sense that 5120 was gonna come back through that gap. Gets a nice that roll there, 588. Now the gun sound on this is quite nice. And you can see he's already almost reloaded. Feels like he just fired. Now he, again, his senses tingle, and he backs into this corner, expecting these tanks to come around his right side. He really wanted to take a shot at that Vipra, but wasn't sure if he was going to get shot in the side. One of Killer Banks, Killer Beasts, excuse me, biggest strengths in this game is conserving his hit points. He knows how important it is late game, and he's definitely going to do a great job of it. Now you can see he and this WZ. 111, 14 here are almost completely surrounded. Another big hit of that T57 heavy. And the WZ111 is going to take a hit. However, he does finish off that tier 10 American auto loading tank. Killer Beast is now completely surrounded in here, pretty much by himself. He does have the Scorpion over there, as well as the Progetto. 
and a Fosh and a Yudez on the other side. Now looking, looking, which target looks for the Badger, looks for the Sturve, sees a low health Rhymatail Forsake, who's looking right at him and doesn't waste a second, acquiring the target and killing it in probably less than a second. So that was a very impressive play for me, and I, I found myself congratulating him out loud, actually, on that one. Now he's looking for that 120 again. Where's the Veeper? That's what he's looking for. The Veeper is looking at him. Doesn't quite get the shot in there. Hits the upper plate of the Veeper, which is incredibly strong, even for the BZ heat round, and it's going to bounce off. So no connection there. His team has pulled it back. One kill, and they're pretty even on hit points. And now Killer's looking for the Badger. He's not going to get it on that side. Not going to get it on that side either. His gun depression isn't quite good enough. Trying. The Badger goes behind the pillar. So Killer Beast is going to back off. The Badger's looking to turn. But it's not going to be early enough. And he's going to get shot for 642. Now here comes the Progetto to his rescue. Finishing off the AMX 5120. And that is going to be the start of a very unexpected friendship. That V Perez is going to take his last breath as he comes around the corner, as he gets finished off by Killer. And now it is just him and the Progetto left against four enemy vehicles. It should be noted they are up HP, however that doesn't matter so much when there's this many enemies to do it. Stir of K puts a shot into his side again, that's what I was talking about earlier. And Killer is unfortunately not going to get a shot into that Stir of K. It's just going to critical and take his track off. Killer's backing up, and he's actually going to reverse back over, which was something I didn't expect. I thought he was going for the Stir of K, but he's played well so far. Let's not question his decisions. The Progetto is going to back off. Killer's looking to engage the Sturve. Sturve is going to bounce. Killer's going to put a nice hit into him. High rolling yet again. And he is going to get ready to back off. Now, so far, Killer has done a pretty decent job. 5,400, but at this point, he has to win the game. So he's going to put a shot in looking to ram the Sturve K, and now Killer is going to make use of the Rocket Boosters, ramming that Sturve K, and then using the remaining 5 seconds on the Rocket Booster to get clear of the WZ120FT. Now the Progetto 65 finishes off the Badger for his 5th kill. At this point, as long as they win and they stay alive, they could get a Brothers in Arms medal, but we'll have to see that in a bit. Now the WZ is running around, Killer is going to fire on the move against the T103, finishing him off. And here comes the generosity and sportsmanship portion of it. Killer has invited this Progetto 65 to the platoon, and he's going to ask a very interesting question in chat to this Progetto. I'm wondering if you can guess what it is. He asks if the Progetto wants the kill. Now, why is that? Well, the Progetto's on five kills. If he gets a six, he gets a top gun. So Killer's actually offering, he could easily kill this WZ120 right now, but he's offering the Progetto the kill since... The Progetto really helped him win this game. And Killer is going to unfortunately have to do a little bit of unsportsmanlike stuff to give this Progetto the kill, who isn't exactly going to make it easy for Killer, putting one shot in there, and then the Progetto backs off. So WZ knows what's up here. And you have to remember that this person who Killer is giving this kill to, he doesn't know him. They just met. But amazing generosity there, something you very, very rarely see in random battles nowadays to give somebody a kill for a Top Gun. As a matter of fact, normally you have to beg somebody to let you get the kill. So amazing work there. I think we checked all the boxes. I'd say the Sportsmanship, the Progetto, and Killer Beast worked very well together. Again, shout out to Panzer Corp there. The generosity, Killer giving this Progetto the kill so we can get the Top Gun, the teamwork, as they finished off the final four enemy vehicles by themselves and the pure skill with Killer picking up what should have been pretty much 7,000 damage and five kills, but again, with him giving the kill, he's going to just get, well, 6,400. Still a fantastic result in any vehicle. Let's take a look at the post game. Well, Killer's title here certainly fits this replay. Carry in the BZ-75, an unexpected ally. He's going to finish with a second class mastery badge. You have to do a lot to get a mastery badge in, or an ace tanker in this vehicle. Bruiser, duelist for destroying two vehicles that engaged him, fighter for his four kills, and a fire for effect, obviously. He's going to get a brothers in arms as he platoons up with the Brigetto 65, and they both stay alive, and a high caliber for his 6,402 damage there. Finishing 
at the second top of his team on XP, but top on damage. Again, huge shout out there to, um, actually it's Clemmer one na he must have been anonymized in that battle, who finished with 6 kills and 4,700 damage. The two of them together pretty much carried their team as they got close to as much damage as most of the team did combined. Killer is going to lose a little bit of credits there, even with a premium account and a personal reserve bonus, as he spent $50,000 or 50,000 credits resupplying his consumables and 63,000 on all of the ammunition. He spent quite a bit of heat, which isn't cheap. Out of the 15 shots he fired, 13 connected, 11 penetrated, again, his total of 6,402 damage, receiving 9 hits, um, of which 66% of them did not penetrate. Not a badly armored vehicle, however, a lot of those shots did come against tier 8s, so take that into account if you're trying to use this as a tank review. 2,540 blocked, and look at the last little bit here, 1,140 base XP, and after all of his boosters and everything, just shy of 10,000 XP, 9,405 to be exact, and 344 free XP. So this was a fantastic replay. I got an email from Killer, and I also got a poke in TeamSpeak, so um, I'm so happy that I was able to catch this before there was another um, patch that came out that destroyed my ability to watch the replay. So if you have a BZ75, let me know what your favorite part about it is, since I don't have one, and what your recommendation is for equipment, anything like that, any tips on playing this vehicle. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.